Hi, welcome back. In this video, I want to discuss seven vitamins or supplements that can help manage diabetes or help manage some of the complications that come along with diabetes. My only ask though is that you would not discontinue any of your medications or make any major changes to your healthcare without first consulting with your doctor. The first supplement on my list is cinnamon. Cinnamon is a spice that has been used for centuries for its medicinal properties and flavor. It may also have some benefits for people with diabetes as some studies have suggested that it can help lower blood sugar levels and improve insulin sensitivity. One of the possible mechanisms by which cinnamon works is by copying or mimicking the action of insulin. Cinnamon contains a compound called cinnamaldehyde, which can activate insulin receptors on the cells and increase glucose uptake. This can reduce the amount of sugar that stays in the blood and prevent spikes and crashes. Another way that cinnamon may help people with diabetes is by improving insulin sensitivity. In other words, the cells respond much better to insulin. So you're going to, at the end of the day, you're going to require less insulin to do the work that it is supposed to do. In one particular study involving 137 people who were given 250 milligrams of cinnamon twice a day for two months, they noticed that at the end of the two months, the people had enhanced insulin sensitivity and their blood sugar levels had also dropped. Cinnamon may also lower cholesterol and triglyceride levels, which are risk factors for heart disease. It is, however, worth noting that cinnamon may not be for everyone. Um, cinnamon contains a compound called cumarin, which may be toxic to the liver when taken in high doses. So people with a history of liver disease will be a very good idea to double check with your doctor to see if it will be a good idea for you to start anything containing cinnamon. So for that reason, it is also important to be particular about the type of cinnamon that you take. Some types of cinnamon have more of this um, cumarin that can be damaging to the liver than others. So for example, the cassia cinnamon contains more cumarin compared to something like the Ceylon cinnamon. Number two on my list is berberine. Now, berberine is a natural compound that is found in various trees such as the, the golden seal, the barberry, and the Oregon grape. Now, berberine may help diabetics with respect to blood sugar control and also managing some of the complications that come along with diabetes. And it does so along several pathways. Firstly, some studies show that berberine may lower blood sugar levels and be as effective as some conventional diabetes medications in people with type 2 diabetes. Berberine may work by increasing insulin sensitivity, stimulating insulin insulin secretion, reducing glucose production in the liver, and activating an enzyme called AMP activated protein kinase that regulates glucose and lipid metabolism. Berberine may also help lower cholesterol and triglyceride levels, which are often elevated in people with diabetes. It does so by inhibiting an enzyme called PKSK9, which plays a role in regulating cholesterol levels in the liver. Now, if this PKSK9 enzyme sounds familiar, that is the same enzyme that newer medications that are used to manage cholesterol like Repatha and Praloint, that is the same enzyme that these newer, more expensive medications also inhibit to control cholesterol levels. Additionally, berberine has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, which may help protect against some of the complications of diabetes, such as uh, nerve damage, eye damage, and kidney damage. The typical dose for berberine for diabetes is anywhere between 600 to 2700 milligrams, usually taking about two or three times a day before meals. Now just know that for some people, berberine may have some gastrointestinal side effects, diarrhea, nausea, constipation, things like that. And also it may interact with some medications like blood thinners, antidepressants. So it would definitely be a good idea to just run it by your doctor or your pharmacist just to make sure that it is okay with your current medication regimen. The next on my list is alpha lipoic acid, which is a natural compound that has several benefits for people with diabetes. Alpha lipoic acid is one of the most potent antioxidants and it can help protect the cells from the oxidative damage as a result of high blood glucose levels. One of the main complications of diabetes is diabetic neuropathy, which is nerve damage that causes pain, numbness, tingling, and weakness in the limbs. Alpha lipoic acid may reduce these symptoms by enhancing nerve blood flow and preventing nerve inflammation. Alpha lipoic acid can be found in certain foods such as liver, red meat, broccoli, spinach, but usually the, the concentrations or the quantities in such foods tend to be relatively low. So for you to get a therapeutic dose, most people will resort to supplements. Now, if you're looking to choose a supplement, have a video detailing how you can choose the best alpha lipoic acid. I'm going to link it in the description. I'll also put a, a link to that particular product in the description. So if you decide to buy it, you can take a look at that. The next on my list is magnesium. Magnesium is an essential mineral that plays a role in over 300 enzymatic reactions in the body. These include glucose metabolism, insulin secretion, nerve function, 
and blood pressure regulation. Unfortunately, magnesium deficiency is quite common among people with diabetes and it may worsen insulin resistance and it may even increase the risk of developing the complications of diabetes such as cardiovascular disease, neuropathy, and retinopathy. The good thing is that magnesium supplementation has been shown to improve insulin sensitivity and help control blood sugar levels. A 2017 review and meta-analysis concluded that magnesium supplementation can help improve fasting blood glucose levels, improve HDL or the good cholesterol, reduce LDL or the bad cholesterol, as well as reducing triglycerides and helping to bring down blood pressure, all of which are risk factors for developing cardiac disease in people with diabetes. The recommended dose of magnesium is about 300 to 600 milligrams per day, but for magnesium, you really need to pay attention to what type of magnesium you're buying. I have a whole video going through which is the best magnesium to buy for the particular condition that you're trying to take care of. Some magnesium preparations are very poorly absorbed. Magnesium oxide being one is so very poorly absorbed. Unfortunately, that is the one that is most available. Um, if you want to really find out which magnesium is best for you, check out my video that I've linked in the description. Number five is vitamin B1. Now, vitamin B1, also known as thiamine, is a water-soluble vitamin that is involved in energy production, carbohydrate metabolism, and nerve function. Another unfortunate scenario is that people with diabetes generally tend to have low levels of vitamin B1. Uh, this is because of reduced absorption as well as increased urinary excretion. It has been documented that low levels of vitamin B1 is a key contributor to developing diabetic neuropathy. Now, talking about vitamin B1, benfotiamine is the synthetic version of it and it has been shown to be more bioavailable in other words it is bet much better absorbed and it has also been shown to be more efficacious than the thiamine so if you are going to opt for a vitamin b1 preparation my go-to would be rather be benfotiamine just because it is more bioavailable and has been shown to be more efficacious benfotiamine may also improve insulin sensitivity and improving glucose uptake by the cells and thereby reducing circulating blood sugar levels and further down the line reducing the the complications that come with that. In one double-blind placebo-controlled trial published in the National Library of Medicine involving 165 people, they divided them into three groups. One group received 600 milligrams of benfotiamine, the other group received 300 milligrams of benfotiamine, and another group received a placebo. In other words, they didn't take any medication. After six weeks of treatment, they evaluated their study participants, and the groups that took the benfotiamine, that is the 300 milligram and the 600 milligram group, all showed improvement in their neuropathic pain symptoms, with the greatest improvement being shown in the people that were taking the 600 milligrams followed by the 300 milligrams. The placebo control group did not show any statistically significant improvement in their pain score. The typical recommended dose for benfotiamine is about 300 to 600 milligrams taken daily. Number six, vitamin D. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin that plays significant role in a lot of the body's processes such as immune function, bone health, and inflammation. People with diabetes or prediabetes typically have low levels of vitamin D, which may impair the ability to produce enough insulin or even to respond appropriately to insulin. Several studies have been conducted to investigate whether taking vitamin D supplements may improve blood sugar control or may delay the onset of prediabetes, that is, delay the progression of prediabetes to diabetes. Now, prediabetes is a situation where the blood sugar levels are elevated, but they are not high enough for the person to be diagnosed as being diabetic. Unfortunately, prediabetes is a fairly common condition. The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, puts it that about one in three Americans is prediabetic. According to a systematic review and meta-analysis published in the Annals of Internal Medicine, people who are prediabetic and take supplements of vitamin D reduce their chances of progressing into type 2 diabetes by 15%. In addition to preventing or delaying the onset of type to diabetes for people who are pre-diabetic, vitamin B may also be beneficial for people who already have diabetes by improving insulin sensitivity and helping in the control of blood sugar levels. In one study involving 96 adults who had just been newly diagnosed with diabetes, they found that supplementing with vitamin D at 5,000 international units per day drastically improved their peripheral insulin sensitivity and also improved their beta cell function. Now, the beta cells are the cells that actually produce insulin. So they were able to conclude that vitamin D supplementation is actually beneficial or helpful for people who already have diabetes. Vitamin D may be obtained from food sources such as fatty fish, egg yolks, dairy products, cheese, and some fortified products. Another good way to get vitamin D is just exposure to sunshine. Your body will make it as you expose yourself to sunshine. But the truth of the matter is that a lot of people don't even get enough even based on the diet or exposure to sunshine so they may resort to supplements. The recommended daily allowance for vitamin D is about 600 
800 international units. And for some people, and as we get older, that may increase to about 800 international units for people who are 70 and over. It is best practice though that before you start taking any vitamin D supplements, just know where your levels are. So discuss that with your doctor before you embark on taking any vitamin D supplements. Number seven is chromium. Chromium is an important trace element that is essential for the proper functioning of insulin. Some studies have shown that chromium helps to improve insulin sensitivity and for the better management of blood sugar levels in people with type 2 diabetes. One of the forms of chromium that has been studied for diabetes is chromium picolinate, which is a combination of chromium and picolinic acid. A meta-analysis of 16 controlled randomized clinical trials found that supplementation of chromium picolinate for people with diabetes resulted in a significant significant reduction in their HbA1c levels. Another form of chromium that has been used for people with diabetes is chromium-rich brewer's yeast, which is a natural source of chromium and other nutrients. Chromium-rich brewer's yeast may have additional benefits in terms of increasing the number of insulin receptors and also enhancing the activity of glucose transporters. When it comes to chromium, though, the data is a little bit mixed because some studies were not able to conclude that chromium is actually beneficial. So I guess more studies will be needed in that respect. Chromium supplements are generally safe to take, but but a, just a word of caution that it may affect thyroid levels. So if you have a history of thyroid disease or if you take thyroid medication, make sure to check with your doctor and monitor your thyroid levels if you decide to add chromium to your diabetes management regimen. I thank you very much for staying through. I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up on your screen. Now it's another video that I think you may find beneficial. Stay blessed. Catch you on the next video.